what's going on everybody brandon here we are going to build a bowyer's bench today i've spent a lot of time sitting in chairs working on in vices um, but sometimes it's really nice to have a bowyer's bench and what a bowyer's bench is uh, or a shaving horse there's a lot of names for it but in the bowyer world or bow making world is bowyer's bench um, what it is is a, it's a bench you can sit on uh, and there's a clamp that you operate with your feet and that will actually hold your bow stave um, while you can use a draw knife a file, a rasp, um, a scraper. Um, I'll go through uh, what you're gonna need for material uh, and tools. This could all be done all with hand tools. Um, you will need a drill, which you can use for the hand saw. I'm gonna use a chop saw today. Um, but this is a pretty easy project and it's gonna be cheap. Do you need one of these to build a bow? No, but it can make your life a lot easier. So let's get started. On the list of materials will be a three inch door hinge, a box of three inch screws, uh, we're going to need four eight foot long two by fours. Um, you can go cheap and get the, the lower quality two by fours. I kind of splurged a little bit to make sure I got some high quality two by fours without a lot of knots. But four two by fours, eight foot long uh, is what you need for this build. And then you'll also need uh, something for a pivot point. I'm using some 5 8 doweling here. Um, let's get checked out and head back to the garage. All right, here we go. Um, I'll put all the dimensions to the uh, cut list that you'll need uh, in the description um, and then you guys can kind of follow along. I'll kind of give an overview of how all these pieces go together and then the exact dimensions you guys can pull out of that description there. So let's get started. In this bench uh, we have two 60 inch long pieces of 2x4 for the uh, actual bench portion. Um, and we've got, let's see here, I've got all the dimensions written down here, uh, 18 inches. So these legs are 18 inches long based on a, a seat height. We've got a 21 inch um, front leg and that's cut at uh, 30 degree bends on either end. Um, so by cutting the angles, you can see down here at the bottom, um, it sits nice and it makes that bench nice and sturdy front to back, which is where most of your motion will be uh, using a draw knife or a scraper. Um, for the risers for the actual bench uh, clamp, uh, these are 26 inch 2x4s um, and then some various different lengths. We've got a 36 inch, this is your ramp that's adjustable and then we have our adjustable block here um, which is nice for being able to raise the elevation of that ramp um, so that I can clamp uh, thinner pieces of wood. Pieces cut here again. If you guys need those dimensions, uh, check the description below in the comments, uh, and I'll get you all those dimensions. Uh, as far as putting it together, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and just put it together. I'll kind of talk through which uh, dimensions are which pieces, um, but you'll kind of get an idea of how they all fit together as I go. So, uh, if you need to rewind, keep watching this video over and over again. Uh, and it will start to make sense. It's a pretty simple build. Uh, not a lot of pieces, as you can see here. Um, a lot of these pieces, to, to you know, to make your projects cheaper, these are just scrap ends. So you really only need one long two by four, and the rest are just scrap. So again, this is under thirty dollars. Um, you could do it for as cheap as free. You know, if you have some scraps lying around the house. So let's get screwing together. So we're going to start with the body of the bench. That's our two five foot pieces here. And then we're gonna need our eight inch. Our eight inch piece with our 33. And that's gonna go in the front. And I try and always orientate those boards um, so that I don't have to look at the logo. You can sand it off if you want to. And then we have a six inch block to go in the back. We go and by sandwiching those together, um, that's going to give us an inch and a half uh, gap in the middle, um, which will come in handy a little bit later. So let's get all these screwed together. 
in order to be safe, you could go ahead and run a drill bit through these and pre-drill before you put your wood screws in. One tip if you don't have a pre-drill bit is uh, bury these screws all the way to the threads and then put your uh, drill or impact in reverse and in reverse put pressure downwards and you'll kind of burn the inside of the start of that hole and that will keep your boards from splitting. I'm just doing two screws on either side and plenty enough to hold it. So honestly, I bought a whole box of screws for $9 um, and I think I'm going to use half of them. All right, so we got our bench put together here. Uh, this is our 6 inch block in the back, this is our 8 inch block cut at the 30 degree angle. So we're going to go ahead and get our uh, 21 inch front leg, this has got 30 degrees on either end, and we're going to slide it through this hole here. And we're going to orient it in a way that that front leg is going to rest against that 30 degree front block. such. So on the bottom side we're going to be flush. On the top we're going to be flush. So let's go ahead and get that anchored in there. Again two screws on either side so four screws total will hold that front leg. here. Um, we've got our two 18 inch long chunks. Um, 18 inches, again I got that dimension, that's the height of a chair, at least in our house. So um, these end up being vertical, they're not angled like the front leg. Kind of gives the bench that tripod stance. Get these screwed in. of our bench. Um, eventually this is where we're going to build out our seat and then our bracket for the clamp uh, and then our ramp uh, that will hold our, our stave. So let's keep going. So next up is going to be uh, two eight and a half inch pieces. Um, those eight and a half inch pieces make up uh, part of the seat. So just double check, eight and a half. So those are going to go in front of the back legs. Uh, to kind of give some structural support so those don't rotate. And then our 12 inch pieces that we cut are gonna uh, laminate over the top of those. So let's go ahead and get those screwed in now. And then that will give us the base for our seat. in opposing corners is more than more than plenty for what we're doing. So we'll get our 12 inch piece laminate over the top.
There's our seat. Let's test it out. Perfect. Um, if you did have a wider butt, you could always laminate another couple boards on there. All right, next up, let's go ahead and build um, the carriage for the clamp itself. That off to the side. So for, let's start with our two 26 inch pieces and then our 12 and a half inch piece. Um, and that's gonna make up uh, our foot pedal. So as far as spacing um, for that pedal, our four and a half inch block uh, makes up for the four and a half inches uh, for the width of the bench. So at four and a half inches, we'll use that as a spacer for that pedal. And we just kind of want to center it. It's not super crucial. It's just where your foot's going to go. It's like about two and three quarters of an inch. And then we'll drive screws to hold that to the bottom of these. So we got those screwed together. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and put that four and a half inch piece um, right at the top. We'll go ahead and get that piece screwed in. This is going to line up flush with the tops of these posts. So we got a box built here, and then on seven and a half. And this is just to give you strength uh, when you're pushing on the base of this uh, up against your stave. done here let's go ahead and get this um, slid over the top of our bench all right so you can kind of see things coming together here now let's use um, our last three of four pieces this is going to build the wedge for our ramp so we've got our three cuts at 15 degrees uh, we're going to put the long one in the middle and that's just going to be like a tenon. That's going to allow this tenon to be able to slide in and out of this, uh, I guess it would be a mortise. Um, and that will help adjust the height of our ramp. is our 36 inch ramp. Uh, here's where our hinge comes in. So our hinge, turn this bench around here, so our hinge is going to go ahead and screw into the end of the bench here. Um, and where I bought this hinge at Home Depot, it actually uh, came with screws, so we don't even need to use up our screws. And then we're just going to center it. Uh, this is going to be four and a half inches total. Obviously this is a three and a half inch two by four, so we'll just center it on the block itself. We'll get it lined, the hinge lined up with the top of this ramp, centered as close as we can. We have some room, so uh, close to center is fine, and go ahead and get it screwed in. 
snug fit but that's okay you don't want it to go uh, slide around on you all right up next let's get the uh, let's get our frame let's get a pivot point in there so there's a couple different options uh, for a pivot point you could probably even use an arrow shaft um, to make this build really cheap I, I got some wood doweling uh, we're gonna essentially just drill a hole through uh, both the bench base and then the the carriage for the clamp um, and then we'll use this as an axle essentially and we'll just pound a rod through and that'll give us something to pivot on you could use a branch you could use some scrap lumber uh, a carbon arrow maybe um, look around I'm sure you got something laying around the house a piece of PVC pipe would actually work really well as well um, on my other version I I've been using these concrete anchor bolts that I have on hand so kind of Use your imagination, any axle will do, but let's go ahead and for this build, uh, we'll drill it out and put this peg in there. All right, so we need to set the height of the clamp itself and then the distance from the seat. Um, so all I did was throw my toes underneath it and I knew that was gonna give me enough room for some rock. Again, we have adjustability in this ramp, so it's not super crucial where that goes. But what I do want to happen is if I push all the way on this clamp, I want to still hit this ramp because if there's a bow stave in there, maybe you have some thin limb, limb tips or something, you're, you're doing some fine work, I still want to be able to clamp. Um, if this was too close to me, or if your ramp wasn't long enough, and I pivoted, I would miss that ramp, and that I could, that's not what you want. So, we want this far enough away, I can comfortably push and still clamp onto this ramp. So, I think here's where I want it, that's going to give me plenty of room. So we've got our 5 8 bit here. We're gonna go ahead and drive a hole all the way through. show years ago so this will be our next project but as you can see this bench works really nice um, you can stick that in there and just push with my feet and that locks it in I can't pull it um, and so you can run a draw knife a scraper uh, whatever you might need file and build yourself a really nice bow so uh, here we go if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, happy to answer them for you folks. Um, like I just went through the cut list uh, for all the pieces and all the dimensions that you're gonna need. Uh, not bad to build this whole thing for uh, $30, under $30. So uh, I hope this inspires you all to get out, get in your garage, get outside, uh, build a bow. Uh, you won't regret it. Have a blessed night, take care.